All right, we're here with uh, with Julian Bradley, and Julian is actually a and Julian's the, a millennial entrepreneur who's done uh, who's done it all, and um, he's actually had some experience um, in the sales world, has some experience in the financial world, and is now kind of taking his experience and his talents, and is uh, really using it to help students uh, learn the things that that really school didn't teach them. So. Uh, welcome, Julian. Thanks for being on uh, the Millennial Summit. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on here, man. Um, it really means a lot. I'm here to add value and give some energy to all our viewers today. I know how important it is for students to really figure out the tools and the skills that they were never taught in school to allow them, to enable them, to inspire them to reach to the next level. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to be here, man. Well, I love that, man. And tell me, you know, we, we actually have had some uh, experiences with, with similar companies and mm-hmm. kind of came up in the, in the same kind of world. But tell me why you feel personal growth and why you feel that some of these things are so uh, important for, for specifically young people to be learning right now. Okay, so I'm going to break it down like this. I'm gonna, it's really, really simple. The more you learn, the more you earn. And I'm going to take it back to a conference. I don't know if you were there. Since we were both working with Cutco, I don't know if you were at this conference when Gary uh, J. Papazan actually was a speaker. And um, afterwards, it was we had this private time where we can actually, like some of the top reps got to have like a more intimate uh, meeting with them. Now, beforehand, he gave everyone a book. He sent out everyone a book. I got the book. Guess what I did? I gave it away to somebody. I said, you know, I, I was like, I didn't read. I had a, I had a self-limiting belief that I didn't read. Since I had ADD and I had ADHD, I always told myself that I wasn't a good reader and I didn't read. Like, you couldn't pay me when I'm sitting down doing nothing to read. So what I did is I took his book, threw it away. Right? I just gave it, gave it away to somebody. Next thing you know, I'm at the conference. His speech was amazing. I, I go up to him afterwards at, this, uh, at the, the second meeting where you can have a more intimate conversation with him. It was a group of, I think, about 100 people or so. And um, I got a chance to talk to him. And that conversation literally changed my life. I'll tell you about the way it goes. I asked him, I'm like, hey, Jay, this was an amazing talk. How can I find out some more information about everything that you were just talking about? Well, he's like, oh. Well, you, you have the book, right? And I was just like, yeah, well, I, I gave it away. He's like, why is that? I'm like, well, I can't, I, I don't read. He looked at me like I had five heads. I never forget the look on his face. He looked at me like I had five heads. He said, you don't read? And I was like, no, I don't read. He's like, well, how do you ever expect? He said, how do you ever expect to be the best at anything you do if you don't read? Mm. And I thought, well, I listen to audiobooks, I do this, I do that. And, and he was like, no, 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 no. People do that already. You got to think. Let's say you're one person over here, you read zero books, and the other person reads uh, 10 books a year, over five years. One person's read 50 books, and you read zero. Now, most CEOs read 50 books a year. So who are you trying to compete with? Are you trying to compete with people on a basic level? Or are you trying to compete with the people in the best in your field? Who mm. is who's going to be? He asked me, who do you think is going to have uh, more opportunities? Who's going to be able to see more opportunities? Who's going to be seen as an expert in your field? The person who reads nothing but just listens to stuff or the person who does it all and really just it becomes an expert. So ever since from there, I really started doing reading every single day. So now I read for an hour a day. I listen to audio books an hour a day. Um, you know, I, I go to conferences, I get courses, and I, and I see a direct correlation. Actually, right before we got on this call, I just paid $4,000 to be in the millennial mas- this, uh, mastermind. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Go Abundance. I just paid $4,000 to be in this course. Now, you, you might say, whoa, $4,000 to be in a group of uh, people. But guys, if you care about your success... You need to invest in your success. More people spend more money going out to eat, going to concerts, going on vacation than they do on their own personal development. And what happens is they use up that money on things that rust, rot, and depreciate, and then the money's gone, and they have nothing to show for it. Me, I like to invest my money on books, conferences, you know, different networking events, you know, flying across the country or across the world to meet up or to go to this conference. Because that gives me not only better social capital, but also intellectual capital. Yeah. And not only does it do that, it gives me more awareness. So I say all that to say the more money you spend on your personal development, the more time you spend, the more awareness you have, which makes 
you're you make better decisions, which means you have a better life. Well, yeah. If you want to play at a higher level, you know, you got to be able to to think differently and think at their level. And so, what what is what's inspired you to really raise your game? And you mentioned wanting to be the best and 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 doing things differently in order to do that. So. Why do you feel that that's been the thing that you've been chasing, or why have you uh, kind of dedicated yourself to to really growing uh, yourself and, and and being excellent? Why why does that kind of motivate you? Well, that's a great question. I, I like being the best and uh, not comparing myself to other people. I mean, I like getting better than I was before. I like perce- I like seeing progression, progress, momentum. Those are the things that fire me up. So I, I look at it like this. I mean, some some people are really externally motivated by just being the best. I like to be, you know, be in a competition with myself. It, also, the reason why I have so much drive to go and go out and do the things that I need to do that are necessary in order to get what I want, because you know, I don't even. It's it's about seven thirty, seven forty something right now. I'm at WeWork. Most people have left for the day. I'm going to be here for a few more hours, grinding and grinding. And the reason why I do that is because I want to have the freedom. I sacrifice today for a greater tomorrow so that I have the freedom to do what I want, when I want, with who I want, whatever I want. And that's the ultimate success for me personally. So when I see people who are chilling all day and then they don't have the freedom to go out and go to vacations, they don't have the freedom to go live the life on their terms. That it's not cutting it for me. That's not cutting yeah. it for me. Yeah, freedom is huge, right? We want to sacrifice now so we can have that later. So, so you talked about reading. You talked about uh, listening to audios. What are some things that people should be doing on a on a daily, weekly, on a consistent basis that's going to help uh, to improve them themselves? Oh man, um, that's a great question. One of the biggest things that you can do to ensure your success is having the right habits. Having success habits, because your habits determine your lifestyle. And if you want to become healthy, eat healthier foods. If you want to have more freedom, invest habitually in the things that are going to yield you more freedom later on. So some of the things that I do, I don't know if you're familiar with the Miracle Morning. The Miracle Morning is when you wake up in the morning, for those of you who don't know, and you do a set of rituals, morning rituals. That could be your affirmations, visualizations. I do meditation. I write down my goals. I, I, I do a whole bunch of different things. And, you know, I, it fires me up in the morning. It gets me pumped up every single morning. And I also say what I'm grateful for. You know, what, what I really love, who I love, who I'm very grateful for. And that, that, that makes me come from a place of thank God I'm here. Thank God I'm able to do what I'm doing. And um, I can keep on moving. So that's one of the first things I do during the day. Now, midday, here's another thing you can do. During the midday, I, you can have you know, automatic text message alerts set up so that it comes to your phone. Or you can have alerts on your phone that pop up. And that, some of the things that I ask myself during the midday are the majority of my actions in alignment with my goals. Who am I mm. connecting with? What, what am I focusing on right now? If I'm not focusing on the things that are going to move me closer to my goals, that's okay. But I at least am aware of it, so now I can adjust. But if you don't, and you just dibble-dabble throughout the whole day, the day ends and not much gets done. At the end of the day, I take it to the last part. Reflection is huge. So many people don't reflect, and then what happens is they relive the same day over and over and over again, which days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, months turn into years. And most people who you see are older, they say, oh, I have 25 years of experience. Wrong. They usually have the same year of experience 25 times. Most people don't reflect, and then they get better for that next year. If you want to move up, move your income up. If you want to step up in any area of your life, what happens is you need to make sure that you're taking reflection seriously and just don't do it at New Year's Eve or New Year's when you're saying, okay, these are my resolutions for the year. How did my year go? Because most likely you can't even remember 365 days back. Most people can't remember two days back. I know I can't. So I like to remember what I did exactly for that day at the end of the day so I can adjust and make next day even better. 
I love it. That's that's huge. And so you mentioned a lot about reflection. And um, what are, is there any other? You mentioned uh, who am I? What am I focusing on? Who am I connecting with? Those are some great questions. Yes. What else do you find yourself asking uh, yourself, whether it be uh, at the end of the week or at the end of the day, or what? What other reflection questions do you find uh, kind of yeah. give you some awareness? So that's that's a great question. Um, I'm looking forward on my Evernote right now to pull it all up. Uh, but I can just go off of it mostly off the top of my head. So I, I usually rate myself at the end of each week. My, uh, my Evernote automatically creates a new note every single week. And, uh, let me see. Reflections. Reflections. See it here. Okay. Well, for some reason it didn't pop up. So I'll just do it anyway. So I rate myself in my finances, my personal development. I rate myself in my reading. I rate myself on whatever skill that I'm going to have to hone in order for me to become the better version of myself. So if that means speaking, if that means um, studying something, let's say website development, copy, marketing, all those different things, I'm going to have a, a metric for that. And uh, especially finances, too. Uh, all these different things I measure at the end of the week. How am I doing? Is the majority of my actions in alignment with my goals? And I look at my schedule. So if you guys, if you saw my schedule right now, my schedule is color-coded to the max. I have my iPad right here. So my schedule is color-coded to the max. And it starts all the way at 4. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a little too far. All the way at 4 a.m. Every single day is accounted for. If it doesn't matter from, you know, meditating for 15 minutes, it doesn't matter if I take out the trash, it doesn't matter what I do, it's in my schedule. And I make sure I put it in my schedule. If I have a conversation with somebody and it takes more than five or 10 minutes, I put it in my schedule. So at the end of the week, just by glancing at my schedule and I can see what colors mean certain things, I can be like, wow, I said I wanted to do X, Y, and Z, but that color didn't really show up that much in the schedule. Let me do a little calculation, see how much time I actually spent doing what I said I was going to do. And I do that every day, and that turns into every week, and I can review every week. And at the end of the month, I have a very great picture of exactly what I said I wanted to set out do in the beginning of the month or the week and what actually happened, better or worse. So. Well, that's huge. And t tell me about the different areas that you focus on. You mentioned finances and because uh, I think that, you know, one thing that Hal talks about is the wheel of life. So what, what different areas do you find yourself spending time on and uh, throughout the week? Okay. Um, personal development, for sure. That is a must. That is a non-negotiable. It doesn't matter when it happens. Well, it mostly always happens after I get back home from the gym. So me and my fiance, we go to the gym in the morning at 530 in the morning um, or 5, 530 in the morning. That's, that's when we go. And uh, right after I come home, I meditate, I, I, I read, and I focus on actually the things that are going to move me closer in any area of my goal. So let's say, let's say I have, there's, there's a thing called process goals, and there's a thing called product goals. And process goals are the things that you need to do in order to get that product goal, right? So let's say it's like, I want to have a six-pack abs or whatever, right? You, so that's the product goal. That's the end result. That's not what you should go for. You should figure out the process goal. So, okay, I need to eat right. Okay, the next thing I need to do is go for a run every day. Or the next day, um, the next thing I need to do is go to the gym three or four, four or five days a week. Those are the process goals that's going to get you your end product goal. So at the beginning of the week, I figure out what goals am I going to want to go after, which are my product goals, and I re reverse engineer and I say, okay, these are the process goals that are going to enable me to actually get that end result that I want. So I don't go after the end result. I go after the process because that's where it is. I love that. I love that. Tracking both of those, knowing the, which ones it's, uh, it's going to be. So let's, uh, man, we've, we've been hitting on it a lot, but um, I, I really would like to get into some of the tactical things because I find that a lot of people, especially with people our, uh, our generation, uh, personal development isn't isn't very sexy, or it's not something that uh, man. I just I wish it was. I wish it was sexier. I wish it was more of the thing to do. So, what are some things that someone can do to get started, or 
or where are some places that you would point people in order to really get the get the ball rolling in terms of their personal development? Yeah, so my biggest thing is this. You need to know you. You need to know yourself. Books, conferences, different videos, different things, they give you more insight about how to view yourself. They, they give you another set of lenses to look through to see the world and also to see yourself. The more you invest, like I said, into yourself, the more awareness you will have. And the more awareness you will have, the better you handle situations, maybe re- with different relationships. It doesn't matter if it's with your significant other, with friends, with family. You'll have more skills to use, to grow with relationships, to maintain relationships, to add value to relationships. If it's your health, you learn about, you know, anything that you want to do that's important to you, hopefully finances are important to you, hopefully. Hopefully your health is important to you, right? Hopefully, right? And hopefully your freedom is important to you. So I urge you, if you care about any of those three subjects, Don't play yourself and then don't actually end up investing money back into yourself to have more awareness to take care of those things. So you ask me, where can someone start if they want to get the ball rolling? Well, right now we are in a time where there is more resources than ever before. YouTube, Facebook, um, you know, there's you can go to the free library. There is no excuse. I met people who literally are dead flat broke. But not for long. They go to the library. They reach out. They try to get mentors. They, they go out of their way. They make sure that they take the necessary actions. And it's all about taking actions. Most people, most people don't take action, man. That, and that's another reason why people struggle. And if you're a millennial listening to this right now and you have a vision of getting a car, or getting the house, or doing something that you want, man, at the end of the day, you can learn all you want. But it's applied knowledge, not just knowledge. So it's important to figure out exactly what you need to learn, learn it, and then take action on it. Quick tip. Something that I, uh, I, that I do, I, I, I teach my coaching clients. Most people just read and they close the book. That doesn't mean you understand what you just read. Most people, if I ask them, hey, what did you just learn? They would be like, uh, 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 you know what I mean? They wouldn't be really to explain it. And then I, if I asked them how they're going to implement it, they wouldn't even they wouldn't know because they just glanced over. They understood the words on the page, but they didn't understand it on a deeper level, like Gandhi says. So they didn't understand it at a deeper level for it to become instinctual knowledge so they can act on it. So one quick tip that you guys can do if you're listening to this and you want to suck the life out of everything that you learn so that it becomes more instinctual and that you actually start taking more action off the things that you learn, is this. Ask yourself two questions. You ready? The first question, what did I just learn? (laughs) Simple, right? But here's the thing. When you ask it out loud, what happens is now you have to verbalize it. Most people, if you ask it in your head, your, your brain will just rationalize and say a whole bunch of words, maybe even numbers, like blah, blah, blah. It'll just come up with a jumbled up sentence. But when you say it out loud, now you actually have to put your thoughts to words and verbalize it into an actual sentence that makes sense. Do you you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. I've got to be able to articulate what you're learning. Exactly. So that's the first question. So that's the first question. The second question is this. How am I going to implement this in my life today? So you ask yourself those two questions out loud. You can ask yourself and then you can talk. Let's say you speak to the wall, speak to your dog, your cat. Your, your neighbor, your friend, it doesn't matter who. Make sure you try to teach someone else later on that day what you learned, and it'll be even deeper. So now you taught yourself what you learned. Now you're going to teach someone else what you learned, and then you're, you're already asking yourself, how am I going to implement this in my life? When a situation comes up, when that piece of knowledge is going to be relevant and that's going to be able to help you out, it's going to be more instinctual than just to be like, wait, I... I thought I've read something about that later on because you had conversations about it. You talked about it, even if it's with yourself. Mm. That's great. And what I'm curious now, Julian, is you've seen like you've you've put in a lot of action, and I what I we work similarly. I, I have people on my team, and you have coaching clients, and I know you've even got your own uh, coaching program. What do you find uh, holds people back from taking the amount of action that they need? What 
what really prevents people from taking um, the necessary amounts of action to hit their goals? Hmm. Great question. Great question. You know, my mom actually just asked me that same question a couple days ago. Um, I feel like the thing that, t- that the thing that stops people from taking action is probably a few things. It could be a few things. It could be fear, false evidence appearing real. It could be the story that they're telling themselves. Um, it could be that they need to shift their paradigm, which means the belief system that they're using to actually go out and look at the world. Maybe some people's paradigms need to be shifted for them to enable themselves to actually go and take action. Because let's say I told you you can run a, you can, you can run ten miles, and you're like, I can't run ten miles, and then you just continuously told yourself that, and then you didn't even take an action enough to go instead of like, I can run ten miles. I guarantee you can find run ten miles. That was a similar situation with me. I. Could, I I couldn't even run like a, a mile and a half. It was the craziest thing. And I just ran a 10 miler. It was the like that was a huge breakthrough mentally for me. So I that that started me taking action because I shifted my paradigm and said, I can do this. I saw uh, people running the race who were 70. I saw people running the race who were young. And I was like, hey, if they can do it, I can do it. So maybe you need to see somebody else. That could be another thing that people take an action. People maybe aren't seeing other people getting the results that they currently want, which is not enabling them to um get motivated to go and take action another thing i think is uh that i think that could stop people from taking action is this they're not they're not uh they're not discounting the future i mean uh dis- discounting the present so i forgot where i just read this in a book actually um i read a lot of books but um what happens is people in order to take action they need to discount the present. So that means you need to make you think you need to think logically like you need to associate pain. Take take, take right now off the pedestal. Yeah. Be, be, take kind of take your ego out of it and realize the reality uh of where you're actually at is mm. is probably not not where you need to be. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Totally. So you, once people are like, okay, once they come to terms and say, okay, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not, I love positive thinking, but if things aren't the way you're going, like the way you want it to go, acknowledge it. Because if you don't acknowledge it and you don't take 100% responsibility for your actions, for your results, you're not going to, you're, you're relinquishing your power to somebody else. So you got to discount the future. I mean, discount the present. Say, okay, this is not where I want to be. Even if you're doing well, I can do better. And then you got to have a better future of the past. You got to have a better picture of the past. I mean, the future. I'm sorry. Getting all twisted. You have to have a better picture of the future. So what that means is you need to vision the future after you take the necessary actions to get you out of the spot where you currently are a lot better than where you currently are. That's going to enable you. That's going to fire you up to take action. Because if you see, if you associate pain with where you are right now, you're going to want to move to pleasure. Most people are either motivated by pain or pleasure or both. Most people are more motivated by pain, though, than pleasure. So that, yeah. that's another thing. You need to know yourself. I go back to that. Know yourself. Know what motivates you so that you can get your butt off the couch or do whatever you need to do to take the necessary actions to actually go out and get, your, get, get whatever you need to get done. Mm. I love it. Wow. That was some good stuff. I've got a, a page full of notes I'm going to have to go back and review. So that was, uh, that was stellar. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions that you could either dive into as little or as much as you want, and then we'll finish up with uh, – with where to find you and how they can learn more, uh, more from you as well. But uh, my first question that I always ask is if you could go, uh, well, actually, you know, the nice thing is that you are, you're doing it now. So if there's one skill that you wish uh, you had had when you were, you know, 15 or, you know, even when you were younger that you mm. feel could extrapolate uh, to where, where you are today, what, what skill do you wish you could have start working on earlier? Reading. Mm. Reading for sure. It wasn't probably until I was 19 or so until I actually started reading. Um, I mean, even in school, I wouldn't read. I mean, in school, here's the thing. People have such a negative taste in their mouth from books when they hear books and reading because most of the time they're conditioned to read a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't apply to their life, that they don't even care about, to answer questions on something that they could care less about. And so if, if I told you in your free time, hey, why don't you go read this? They're like, whoa, whoa, I ain't going to read, man. I find everything and anything else to do besides that. That was one of the biggest mistakes for my, for, of me uh, that I made. So 
reading. I, that's the one thing I would have done because that would have gave me more awareness and I would have been more into the personal development space where I was be more aware at a younger age. So I would have made smarter decisions and I would have made better connections and I would have um, been in a whole nother place than right now. I mean, I'm doing really good right now, but I could always do better. And I always think if I were to go back in time to when I was 13, 14 or whatever, or even younger, I would have just loved that skill, loved this awareness that I had right now back then. Mm, yeah, that's huge. Uh, isn't it interesting that we start reading more when we graduate school or we finish school? It's, well, uh, that's me and you. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's not America. That's <laughs> that's not, that's not America. Most people don't pick up a most people don't pick up a book after they graduate. Mm. And then you wonder why most people are struggling financially, or you know they're they're in a rut, or they don't see themselves progressing at the, the at the rate that they would really like to. Come on now, it's all about taking action, and you can't get something. You can't get results that you don't have by taking actions that you've never done before so you got to like change if if you're not getting the results that you want you got to change the actions that you know so you can get different results it's simple as that yep you definitely make it uh you lay it out there uh pretty simply man um first off i want to you know commend you julian because you we connected this morning and and within you know a few hours i can see that you're someone who really takes action and not only are you preaching that but you really see seem to be living that in your life and uh that's uh that's great to see um you know you leading the way for for other millennials uh, before we head out is there any place that you'd like to send people to find out more if they want to connect with you um where would you like to send uh, send anybody yeah so um you can go see me on facebook julian bradley I created also a uh, course that literally is revolutionizing the way students are are getting information that's going to be tactical, that are going to help people get to the next level. It's called successforscholars.com. You can check it out. I got some awesome speakers. I got some awesome millennials, similar to what you're doing. Um, you know, I just got finished interviewing earlier today, Joel Brown, uh, not Joel Brown, Brandon Carter to, uh, in the morning. I mean, not in the morning. And, been talking all that <laughs> in an hour from now and we uh meeting up with joel brown um from founder of addicted to success um you know millions and millions and millions of followers and uh you know i'm just about helping shift the culture forward so check me out at successforscholars.com check me out at julian bradley and um you know i, I would love for you if you got value message me leave a comment check out my website but i'm, I'm glad i'm glad i could serve you guys thanks so much man Cool. Dude, that-